We continue our talk with Rabbi Leib Tropper, and today the subject is Reb Eliyahu Dessler, the author of the renowned Musa work called Miktav Meliyahu. It's a Musa work which is world-renowned and widely used by both men in yeshivas and by women in Beis Yaakov. It is something which is considered to be very unique, very powerful, and something which is special in particular with regard to clarity and truth. Can you tell us something that, you know, we would gain from understanding more about from Dessler and this, and this monumental work? Yeah, the subject of clarity and truth. First of all, I just want to back up a little bit and tell you that Rav Dessler had a source. He was uh, Zeche to uh, to become one of the most popular Sfarim in Musa that uh, is learned in, like you said, Yeshivas and in learned in um, girls' schools, Beis Yaakov, Reb Desla um, is a giant in Machshava, I'm thinking. And he has actually one piece of, uh, uh, I want to share with you um, regarding the thing you brought up, regarding clarity and truth, which is, um, he, he talks about the first four words, three pages on the first four words of the Ramchal's um, Sil Shishan, which is the most important safer of them all. And he says, um, so it says the foundation of righteousness and the root of all sincere commitment and work service to Hashem. See, once the, the, the ruling going said, like you know, there's no redundancy in the in the in the until Parak So what are the what is this yisoid and sherish? What are the two these two things? Fascinating concept. He says his site is, is like a this is a, is like a is is a foundation that you build on. When you have a certain perspective of Torah that you really could a way that you and your spouse or you alone decide that you're gonna build your home and that you build from there you build. That foundation is there to build on. Mm-hmm. God forbid if the foundation goes like that and then starts sw- you're swerving to the left, uh, everything gets weakened and it could collapse. So the site is very important, Rav Desta points out, that it is something that we have to build and keep it strong and keep it straight, not turn left, not turn right. Make sure that this is the this is the Ratzon Hashem, what you're doing, and that you're building on the foundation of your commitment to the Ratzon Hashem. That's what a uh, Yisoyed is, the foundation. And Shoresh? The Shoresh, Rav Desta says, is something that <clears throat> makes the tree more stable. The longer the tree grows, the shayrish rush of the tree, as they spread and spread and spread, the roots spread throughout the ground, it becomes more firm. <clears throat> and um, as we become, we spread our ideas and we conquer more and more and more of the Torah, the, the Musar of our great leaders of our time and the sherish spreads, the root spreads, so it's, it becomes very strong and it has a longevity. That is what sherish is. Then he goes on to explain, and I'm doing it in a very abbreviated fashion because I know we have other th- questions that we're, we're going to deal with, but um, another uh, uh, another uh, point he puts out is the next four words of the Messiah, of the Messiah Sharm. Sheyis barer Vis Ames Eitzel Ha'adam. You come clear, come cl- clear, and he says, Vis Ames. And Desla has a number of times that he talks about this concept of Imus Halev, mm-hmm. that should be true in your heart. She's Bara Vis Ames. Bara means to him clarity of the mind, intellectual clarity, mind clarity, intelligence. And Vyasamis Eitzel Ha'odam. And Avdesla, and come truthful to men, Avdesla gives, gives his um, his description of Imus Halev, the truth to the heart. And he makes a confession. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it's more important that I read it to you than just me telling it to you. This clarity that we're going to have should be in our hearts. Not, o- not only in our Hearts, not only in our, our mind. I'm sorry. Recognition from the heart is a lot more 
it's very heavy. It's really it's heavy and it's hard. This is just like this. Yedeya ani me. I know myself. Ubaru basichli, and it's clear in my mind. It's clear. It's his barer. It's clear in my mind. Lemushel, she ishun has cigarettes, smoking cigarettes. Koshe he libriusi. It's difficult for my health. Yedeya ani zois me masa yom yom. I see this on a daily basis. I know this. I know this. I see people coughing. See people having trouble breathing. I still, I still, I still smoke. The Lama who's there, why is it that way? Yan Shalavovi Dovit Behergalishan. I became a hostage to habit. Hmm. I became someone who is negated by habit. My, myself, the me of me, is gone because of habit. I merged with habit. The more you turn to it, it's not going to become clear to you. Even if it's clear to you in your mind, you've seen it, people coughing, people can't breathe, people get sick, people get catch all kinds of viruses from that. And to the Bizman Azem, we know even with the ultimate clarity. When it becomes when it becomes true to the heart that you know in your heart, that is no selfish. I must stop smoking. I'm crippling myself. I'm endangering my life, and so on and so forth. Stop, forget about just acting according to what the Seichel. Because the Seichel has all tunnels, different tunnels to go out and come in from mm-hmm. and, you know, get out of doing what you're supposed to do. Uma koshe hu How difficult it is to make the emis solid in your heart. If it's that way with physical Things of health, things of uh, that are related to your body. Kolshkein ve kolshkein binyane yahira vaydus hanefesh. And he says, if regilus, if habit does this to someone, kolshkein consistent tivis sitting in front of you day and night and day and night <coughs> can keep your your heart hostage for a while. So that's regarding that particular question that you, you discussed. Or the, the, uh, in terms of clarity and truth, uh, could we ask, though, did he eventually stop smoking? That's yes, he did. <coughs> yes, he did. So he obviously understood his own... His this own took about late in his ears, right, correct. Now, he also had a derrick, which was very strong, which he took from his Rebbeim, people he learned with, and he had a very strong daya, very strong opinion and feeling that she puts forth about Amunus Chachamim, about having faith in our Tamina Kakam and memory being relying on what their guidance was. Well, not only does he have that unusual strength of conviction regarding Amunus Hachamim, he also has what to say about those who don't okay. have that Amunus Hachamim. And I'll read you. I'm, I just feel more comfortable that if people hear the words of Rabdes, you know, just like Oishis and Machimus, when you see it, Oishis and Chazal tell us the words make it, you know, the, so when you hear it, she says, "Mitoch divay kvoidoi ani roi." So it's like writing, responding to someone. I see, I see that you have some kind of, uh, you know, issue with with the words of the Gedolei Israel. He was talking to somebody who had initially. So initially, yeah, right, right. She so says, "Kaidem kol." Kaidem kol davar oimer lamar. Before anything else, I'm going to tell you. These men- above mentioned Gedayim like Rabbi Baruch Bedel Chavetz Chaim, Rabbi Chaim Moise, Rabbi Chaim Briske. He, I saw some of these people. I saw them in gatherings and conventions and meetings. Binyane Klal Yisrael, with regard to the direction of Klal Yisrael, the leadership of Klal Yisrael. And he says, Chavetz Chaim Zatzal, like the Chavetz Chaim I saw, Hagrachmi Brisk I saw, Hagarin Rabbi Chaim Moise with Manisha Yisrael, Rabbi Chaim Moise. And I could seriously say to you, 
שכמו יסיינו, הן הויסה פיקחוסה מבהלס. Even to small midget minds like us, this is called, I guess, that's, even like, like, you know, like really peanut minds like us, midget minds. Lilliputian. Lilliputians like us, right? We could appreciate their vast greatness in every area that they need to lead Tlaiso and Tyra and Ashkafa and Musa and Yashris and Midas. It's beyond our comprehension. Yafilu even Lasogas our our reach of mind. Putim means small people little pushes, like you said. Shekamasen like us. Hain Hasa Pikusa Mivahelis. It was Frightening to hit this, the, 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 their pictures. For oimek sichlam and the depth of the seichel hoya yireid v'noikiv at a time we go into the deepest depths of the existence of, of that's possible. For loy hoisa shum efsharis to be in no possibility or capability la adam shekem oisenu. For our contemporary man, lama to understand al seif das behiras hamanazim to understand the clarity of their thinking, never. Hmm. So that's the first part. He has another thing to say. But that's the first part of his... his I mean, the first thing we have to know is who we're not. When we talk about Gedal Yisrael, or we talk about in any in a frivolous manner, or we talk to him in a denigrating manner, we have to know who we're talking about. Like I mentioned before, I mean, the Amoraim was... The Amoraim used to be Mechaim Esim, so... And then we talk about them, and then we, understand, we appreciate them. But we, before anything else, his Amun Zachamim is rooted in the fact that who, who are these Chachamim? He saw them. He lived with them. He, he met them at meetings. He saw the godless Rabbi Chaim Oizer. But people would just shake, shake from being Rabbi Chaim Oizer. The The concepts which we're, we're talking about have very much, um, there's a tremendous amount of evidence of what you're saying about his, his zeal for, for truth and clarity. And another area which, in particular, which he emphasizes is the Disciplining of, of children, you know, people today have a great deal of uh, lack of clarity without what to do. How, what do you tell us about that? Well, it's interesting you put that out. at the end of um, at the end of Chelik Gimel. He has a letter about that, and I am not advocating in any way that people should do this because this is something that the look start yelling and screaming. So I'm just repeating to you what Rav Desla says. Rav Desla has a shita. I don't believe he means beating a child, but hitting a child softly, obviously, is good. It's actually a good thing to do. Um, he, he quotes the Gemara in, um, in Marcus as well. But let's just let me find that piece so I could, you know, show it to you. I think it's right here. Right. And he talks about he talks against the contemporary psychology. As you can imagine, right? He says there are two mistakes that caused those who are in researching this issue that that caused them to not to understand and appreciate the meaning of certain things in the Chinuch. They think that person was born without midas at all. What was that word that Aristotle used? A blank? What was it again? Um, Raza, uh, a, a blank chart. Um, but you know what I mean, right? That's right. right. Um, so he, you, they they think that that's how he was born without me this at all. But that is not the that, that is not the case. We we believe la pesa chatas We are born. We start off. We start off. We have an, in, a taiva for. We have instincts. We have born with instincts that to, for bad. Like like even when Asaf was walking, remember the story with Asaf Rivka the Rashi writes in the mission in Medrash that Asaf was kicking. He wanted to go out and. He, he felt that he wanted to go out to the Zorah, and uh, and Yaakov was wanted to go to the yeshiva, right? With yeah. predisposed uh, inclinations. The, the, the instincts, yeah. Instincts. We, we all have instincts, and even one was already somehow working on their instincts, meaning working on it, meaning exp- ex- expressing their instincts. Um, so that, that's one mistake they make, he says he believes. Um, another thing he says that people believe that you have to cultivate little children independence independence and that is a tremendous tremendous mistake he told us not independence 
El Hachno, to humble themselves to those who are bigger than them. Gam Kisha Yipatru Boy Anova Vachno, when he opens up to Achno and Anova, Yilmen may atzmoi Gaiva Ritzicha, he'll. he'll uh, He'll learn from himself about Gai Ben Ritzicha. You know, he'll have enough time. The Gros says in the Gros says in the, in the Igeres Hagrod the Rebbe Dasel quotes Ve'yeshes Erei Ala Even Ve'uleve Even She Enichal Bekla. A person could plant, you could try to plant something on a stone. Will anything grow? It's not going to grow. B'Toroch LaHakos Es Even. You have to break this Even until it becomes pieces of dust almost, and then it's like then it becomes dust. Then it can start helping mm. in the process of growth. That's why I told you. That you should hit your children if they do not obey you. However, doesn't mean you beat them. My father was a first grade rebbe, and he would patch the kid with a little, little ruler. The ruler, the kid was like a little, kind of a little frightened, but he was just like that. He wouldn't hit him that he was wounded, God forbid. But he would hit him in a way that it wasn't it was just to teach him a message, to, to convey a message, and to teach him something. What was he teaching him? The concept of authority. Today we live in a door that I spoke to Rosh Hashiva Baron Shechta uh, Shlita that once has an opportunity to go to him this summer to visit him and I was talking about this business about your children being your buddies being your friends mm. that's terrible I mean it's, that, that, that's diminishing the role that Torah gave a parent and the, it's diminishing the achrayis reminds me very much of what the Chavetz Chaim responded to someone who came to him and said to him um, Rabbi give me your bracha I should have a child a bracha, you want to cry as a piece of child? You know, responsibilities, you want a bracha to be, just because you want, it's a kind of alter ego, you want to be mm. happy, make you happy, and have, be a parent, I mean, that's not, it's a big achrayas, it's a big achrayas, you can't, you can't just abandon that achrayas, if it, part of being a father means to discipline your child, and you don't do that, then you are abandoning your achrayas as a parent, chas v'shalom. And then he goes and said, he quotes his uncle, Reb Zissel, Grace of Mensch, he was a big person, even if the child obeys the father, Roy Limtzolili, he should find some reason to give him a little patch sometimes, just a little patch, just that he should be reminded that there's an authority. Oh, that's my father. Now, I want to add a caveat to this, because I know Rav Volba, Rav was not in favor of that. He said that the Pusik in in Mishle Chesuch Shiftim Mibenoi, that one who holds back his uh, his rod from his child is not doing the right thing. Is referring a rod could be even a glance, a strong glance or mm-hmm. a stare at one child. And so I'll tell you something. And I'll, we'll just end with that particular part. He said, Rev, 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 um, if someone comes home, and calls his kid, "Hey, Heshi, doing your homework." You did learning? Chazring the Gemara you learned today in Yeshiva? And then he sits down with New York Post on his mm. on his pullback chair and he reads the post and uh, so the kid says, My father kills a learn, he comes home, and, uh, mm. don't hit. Don't even try to attempt to even give him a patch. What are you giving me a patch for what? what? You tell me I should learn and then you come home and you go. The patch is appropriate. And Moshe Feinstein comes home and tells his kid, Go learn. Go learn. What is the flicker going to say? My father, my, my, my father. Yes, he's, he, he kids, a child sees someone absorbed in terror. And I'm not saying it's only Ramosha. There are a lot of B'nai Balabatim, a lot of other B'nai Torah, Chosheh, that their life is learning. So they, if they give a little patch, the father doesn't see, the child doesn't see conflict in that. The child sees consistency. Then, then it, it is encouraged to give the little patch to the child. Not, again, not to hurt him, but the patch. And I've seen people get even today which I don't think is the right thing to do to give like, really beatings it's interesting that Reb Chaim uh, Kinevsky in the Sefer um, Yeshe, does advocate you know also hitting I'm not sure it means beating or hitting but he does advocate take a look in the Chinuch letter Chinuch he has it by letter um, he advocates that but all without anger of course absolutely Ang- with anger you lose everything the Rambam might say hey, tell me them. anything with, ad- with anger is uh, then the child takes it you know, you're uncontrollable whatever you know Rebbe, thank you for shedding a lot of uh, clarity and bringing the truth of Rebbe Esther to us, and we hope we'll hear a lot more about what he has to say on so many other issues. Thank you. Thank you.